This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're gonna to take a look at Palony. But before that, this video is brought to you by Lawrence Anderson and Will Houseman. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Palony map can be found over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to French Lorraine, shared between agricultural plains and wooden groves. Rediscover agriculture, livestock, and forestry. This map consists of two typical farms of the region. One is an old farmhouse with modern extensions. The other is a large agricultural building perched on a mountainside. Numerous new factories are available. A completely new village gathers points of sale, farms, and production facilities. This map consists of 86 fields of crops, about 10 forest areas, and a stream called the Dubon. Several innovations come to this map. These include roofs that get wet in the rain, roads that also get wet and dry, then also frost over into winter. You may also see puddles in water of water in certain fields. Some factories have new functions like the sawmill and mills. There are two new agricultural cooperatives, new crops such as mustard, triticale, and alfalfa. A crane for transporting wood at the sawmill, an area to build your own farm, cheese production directly at the farm, a secret quest, and a whole multitude of new decors like the mechanic, the cloth dealership, livestock trader, and water tower. This map also works with the FS22 manure system. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to be using the mods we typically use on lookup maps, which is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, I'll tell you, I laid this map up in farm manager mode and start from scratch, and everything is built out exactly how you're going to see it here in new farm mode. The only difference is, is one, you do not own any machinery, two, you do not own any land, and of course, your bank balances will change respectively. I also loaded this map up with a low end system, and I will say I did suffer some frame rate drops at the main farm, so I was not able to maintain a full 60 FPS at the main farm, but when I left the farm area, I was rebounding and didn't have any issue with high frame rates from there on out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. See, we have several irregularly shaped fields on the map. The map also has a central river that crosses through it. We do have a train that crosses through about the north, the th about one third down, I should say, from the top of the map. And it goes into a tunnel here and a little bit of tunnel over here as well. This map has all the standard crops available to us in FS22. In addition, we have triticale, alfalfa, spelt, and mustard. If you happen to activate the premium expansion, we also have red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Take a look at our farmland screen. You'll see we start by owning farmland ID 103. That is the main starting farm. In any alternate game mode, you have to buy this for $948,000. In addition, we own farmland ID 90, 92, 71, 21, 19, 20, 9, and 25. As far as other things that you're gonna find on this map, we have a BGA here at farmland ID 104. We have a cow pasture that is gonna be available here at farmland ID 86. We have a sheep pasture at farmland ID 87. We have a sheep barn at farmland ID 95. We have a pig area at farmland ID 98. Farmland ID 102 is another cow area. A buildable plot is at farmland ID 123. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen shows us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? And lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We're then going to be able to cross-reference this farmland listing with our field calculator listing, which is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And here we have that listing. You can see as far as the fields we own at the start, we have fields that range from 0.3 hectares all the way up to 1.78. 
As far as the fields we do not own, we can see those listed here. We have several fields between one and three hectares. Saw so one pass there that was about eight hectares in size. That looks to be about maybe the largest field we have on the map. Here we go. Field 82 is 9.9. .9. We do have what appears to be the standard crop counter available to us, but of course we do have gross schedules for triptical, alfalfa, spelt, and mustard added to that. With respect to our prices screen, we can indeed sell all of our basic crops that are available to us in FS22. In addition, we can sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, chase, straw, and grass. I would like to say that the story remains the same as we move down through our base game productions, but that is just not the case, because we do not have the ability of selling fabric, nor do we have the ability to sell chocolate on this map without putting our own sell point down. Now, with respect to the ability to buy a bulk line, we do not have the ability to buy a bulk line, but we do have the ability to sell lime at the landscaper. And we also have the ability of selling our stones at the landscaper as well. So those playing with stones enabled, you will have something to do with those stones. You see we have multiple sell points for our mustard, our alfalfa, our alfalfa hay, triptical, and spelt. We also have the ability of making old style mustard, ve vegetable milk, frames, which we're going to make at the sawmill. With respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. So if you want to do those, you'll have to put your own sell point in production down for that. And the premium expansion and productions, we do have the ability to sell those productions as well as crops. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest, also we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting vehicles, we do start out owning a fair bit of starting machinery. It's all new. None of it is leased. We have a couple chickens at the main starting farm and a cow barn, but we do not have any cows in that barn. This map does have contracts. We do own the farm cheeses shop at the start. That's going to be at the local farm and it's going to be able to make butter, cheese, bread, cake, and old style mustard. To make old style mustard, all we need to do is deliver mustard and we're gonna get the old style mustard as an output. Now this map does also have seven custom collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start out with the case Maxim CVX 115 and the Kloss Arion 660 small tractor. We have the Nova 330 harvester. We also have the PowerStream 500 harvester header. We have our 1986 pickup truck, the Karat 140 TD trailer, Agrimaz POV 5 XL plow, as well as the Lemkin Samgar 9500K cultivator. We have the Amazon KG 3001 Super Power Hero, which is paired up with the Sitya 3000 Super Cedar. We have the Breedall K105 fertilizer and lime spreader, as well as the GMD 4411 side mower. We have the GA 4731 windrower, and the Impress 125F Pro round baler. We do have the DPW 1800 Farm Tech flatbed trailer. We have the Quickie Q5M front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have the fork with grapple, universal bucket, and a bail spike. And then we round it up with a 600 kilogram front weight. As far as mods and DLCs included with the map, there are none. Now, the easiest way to get to the farm, well, is going to be to tab to it, but you know what? This is such a beautiful town. I think we should just take a little bit of a stroll. Of course, we start here at this church, right in front of a nice monument. We're going to stroll down Main Street and hang a right over here. And then the farm is basically right over here. We have a custom farm building. There is going to be the main entrance to the farm itself. This is the entrance to the farm cheese shop. It's a nice little front retail section. We come in here to the back room where we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our 
our cheese factory and our pallet spawn point. As far as our farmhouse sleep trigger goes, well, it is right here, right off the street, right beside the cheese dairy. Then we also have an access to the farm over here along the side. Then we have our silo dump point and fill point. Got our pickup truck. We start out with some coats of fertilizer and herbicide. We also have bale and pallet storage located right here. We can store 250 bales or pallets. We have a workshop trigger located right here. And the activation for that is going to be inside this door. And we have our chicken coop located right here where we can buy and deliver our chickens. 30 total chickens are available. We start out with 16. Our eggs are going to spawn there, and then our food trough is also right here. As far as our pigs, oh, sorry, our pigs, as far as our cows go, we have our milk trigger. We have our cow delivery drop off, 110 cows in this barn. We have our food and straw trigger, as well as our manure heap. And around the corner, we have our slurry trigger. Behind the shed, we do have a silage bunker located right here. We have a second and third silage bunker. Both of those are three-sided and we can unload from the top. Around the side here, we have our bale trailer, our harvester, and it is basically sitting on top of bale storage and pallet storage for a total of 1,450 bales and pallets can be stored here as well. And that is pretty much the local farm right here. Now, before we get on with our flyover, I do remember that I have failed to show you the generic soil map and how it is being applied to these fields. So we're gonna look at that. And we're also gonna go ahead and purchase all of the productions on the map. And I wanna run down through those as well. So here we can see that generic soil map as it is being applied to these fields. And then with respect to production, we have our farm cheeses, where once again, we can make butter, cheese, bread, cake, and old style mustard. We also then have our carpentry where we can make our furniture and wood chips. Our bakery is gonna make bread and cakes. We have a custom mill here that is also going to be able to process oil and sugar. So we can do wheat flour, barley flour, oat, sorghum, and spelt flour. We also have the ability of doing cereal with honey, oats, and corn. Notice there's no raisins that are needed. We also have sunflower, canola, and olive oil. And then we have our sugar beet sugar and our sugar cane sugar. We have a dairy for our butter and cheese and chocolate, even though we can't sell our chocolate. We also can make vegetable milk from spelt, soybeans and oats. Our sawmill will do planks or plank frames. And then we do have the standard BGA. Let's get a little bit of altitude and take a look around. I have to say this map is just absolutely spectacular. If your system can support the frame rates here at the local farm, you are gonna be more than happy, I feel, working on this map. Now, with respect to the farm here being customizable, well, we can sell certain aspects of this farm and then the basically the main big farm building and farmhouse here, that is not sellable. At least I wasn't able to figure out how to sell it. I wasn't able to sell lots of the triggers that are associated with this unified building, but I wasn't able to sell the unified building itself. I was able to get rid of the cow barn the silage bunkers, and I believe this barn itself that we're looking at also went away 
but this large monolithic kind of old farm structure, it was permanent. I think what we'll do is kind of make our way over here to the um, to the west and then work counterclockwise. So here we have a grain cell point in the local cooperative. We're going to find a cell point down there. Right next to that, we do have our vehicle shop. I think we're going to forego the drive around because I think we can hit everything we need to on the flying portion. But here we do have our vehicle trigger. Let's go ahead and get our Mahindra so we can see where vehicles spawn at. We've got a decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in and a decent entrance and exit. Overall, I'd say this map is going to work well with medium sized fields. And then we do have a power washer here and we do have a maintenance trigger. And the dealer is going to be basically here on the left of this hash mark. Now, I do have to say that, well, it looks like we can use this machinery. So we can indeed make use of this dealer equipment. I can't make use of that. Now let's see if I can make use of the baler or the slurry spreader. Nope. That's disappointing. But we do at least get the ability to, um, well, borrow a tractor and a telehandler. How about them apples? Let's get a little altitude and as I mentioned, we have a sheep pasture here at farmland ID 87. We have a trigger that will display and hide the food troughs and the water trough. So if you don't want to use this as an animal pasture, instead you just want to use this as a grass meadow, well you can hide the triggers here and you can then sell the triggers for the animal area. We have 75 sheep in total here with our water trough our food trough. And then as far as where our wool spawns, well, I have to say it's not overly apparent, especially with this grass growing. A little further to the east, we then have our cow meadow. This is going to be at farmland ID 86. Once again, the wrench is going to offer us the ability to hide and show the food and water triggers. We have our water. We have our food up there. We have our delivery point for our cows. 60 total cows here. And then we have our milk trigger right here along the road. In town here, we have our bakery. No, sorry, this is our carpentry. Sorry, carpentry. So we have our dump point, we have our wood cell trigger, we have our activation icon. That's the building, and then we have our pallet spawn point for our carpentry. This is going to allow us to buy liquid fertilizer. We have a water tower up here to draw water out.
Here we have the ability to sell our lime. And this is going to allow us to buy lime into a silo that we're then going to be able to draw lime out of. Our BGA is over here kind of to the southeast. We own Field 25 and we start out by having it windrowed with straw. Kind of an interesting starting. We do have a custom BGA. You are able to sell this biogas plant if you do not own it, but I honestly would not sell it because, well, there's lots of deco elements that are going to remain and it really does make a rather big mess of things if you sell this custom BGA. So here we have our digestate, our interactive icon, our digester, and then our dump point for our liquid manure, two large pull-through silage bunkers, and a scale house. Again, our farm is located right over here, just to orient ourselves back. We went off that distance and came back around a little bit. This is the carpentry shop. This is where we started out at. And I will tell you that when you find the collectibles, there are seven and they form a picture that is going to show up right here. And I believe the picture is going to lead you to a certain location on the map where you can find out a little bit more information about some sort of secret quest. I was successful in finding six of the seven collectibles when I was quickly Trying to figure out what was going on. I couldn't find the seventh one and I just kind of gave up at that point. So here we have our bakery, our interactive icon. We're gonna find the rest around the back. Our dump point. And then our spawn point. We have a wood cell trigger. And a small wood cell point there. So we continue to make our way out of town. Here we have the large mill. Okay, so we have our dump point. We have our interactive icon. A really cool mill animation here. And then around the side, we're going to find our spawn point for our pallets. It's going to be inside here. We have our sawmill located right here on the side of the bridge. So obviously we're going to get our wood chips. Our pallets are going to spawn here. Now do note that this area is not marked out. This is one of the reasons why I went ahead and spawned all the production's outputs full so we can see where all the outputs were because I didn't know that this one was not marked. We have our interactive icon there. Dump point there. And then this is a fun little activity so we have our wood cell point right here we have our wood cell trigger right here but how are we going to get our wood up to here well this is a little tricky a little fun you're going to unload your log or logs on this and then you're going to activate this and well it's going to lift it up and put it into here 
And then once it's deposited here, you can do your wood selfie. I thought this was really well done. I like how this is all set up. And then we dive into the forest. Right at the map boundary. I like how we had all this far as the sawmill goes. This bridge is just super, super awesome. Extends a fair way across the map. Now these power lines, these power towers, they do have collisions. I think for the most part they are not in the middle of fields other than two right there. Here we have Farmland ID 123. This is a buildable plot. Then here we have our animal dealer. And then this is going to be our bale sell point at our animal dealer. Continuing across the northern edge of the map, we have another cow area at farmland ID 102. So again, we can hide and show these triggers, or these markers. We have then our cow delivery, 35 cows in total. We have our milk point, our water, and our food. Just south of that, we have a pig pasture. Fifty pigs total. Oh, sorry. This is a sheep pasture. Why was I thinking that it was a pig pasture? Sorry, everyone. I was just completely mistaken there. Sheep, 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 sheep. So we got our water. We have our food. And once again, it's not super, super clear where our wool is going to spawn. Here we have a train transfer because we do have the ability of selling crop at a train point. We have a fill in empty for our train. We have a rent train trigger there. And then we have our dump point and our fill point for our trailer. Just down the hill from that, we have a really cool custom sheep barn and here we have again pallet storage 250 bales we have the ability of turning on our lights here we have our wool spawn point our food trough and our sheep area 35 sheep in here Then down here we have additional bale storage, bale and pallet storage for 1,500 bales or pallets. This is going to be a service trigger. So for fuel and service, we have our marker right there. And then that is pretty much it. This is going to allow us to fill water from the river. And that, everybody, is going to be the map. Now let's talk about our scoring because we just kind of flew around pretty quick and we need to summarize our scoring again with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such we're getting the map a full point there because we have seven productions built into the map and we also have a buildable zone with respect to the ability to sell armor basing crops animal outputs and production points well we are missing the ability to sell fabric and chocolate so we will have to take off a quarter point there 
with respect to the farms being customizable. Since so much of the standard farm is permanently embedded into the map, we're going to be giving the map a score of 0.5 on that scoring metric. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. Yes. Yes, they are. Even the custom buildings. This map just looks absolutely fabulous. And then our last scoring metric is trigger in interactive areas being clearly marked. And I think you all know what we're going to do here. We're going to take a quarter point off because we do have some vagueness at a couple production points and at some of these exterior pastures as to where our wool is going to spawn. So that's going to leave this map a score of 4.0. I think this map looks great. And quite frankly, if I wasn't tied up with our start on our Hoff Bergman playthrough, it would be really difficult to decide between this and the map we'd looked at just a couple of days ago. Man, oh man, we have more maps than we have time to look at. We also have far more maps than we have time to play on. I don't know how anyone is going to possibly imagine playing on all the maps that were released just this week alone. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map, the score, and, well, are you going to be playing on here or are you not? And until next time, happy farming.